let's get into this new video. Let's see what we got going on today. Take a look at the satellite. Talk about explosive development. We gotta talk about this. Hurricane Lee metamorphosis into a major hurricane overnight. That explosive cyclogenesis that I've been talking about over the last several episodes of Weather Center Nazario is coming to fruition. I'll also tell you right now, the ensemble consistency that we once saw throughout the back end of last week and over the weekend is starting to get a little bit more chaotic, I'll tell you the truth. Latest HAVS A and B model data indicates we could see this system push just a smidge further to the west, getting much closer to our Bahama Islands, more than I'm comfortable with. Today on Weather Center Nazario, we're going to talk all about this. I'm going to give you the latest details and some possible scenarios that could pan out over the next five to seven days as Hurricane Lee goes catastrophic as we watch it unfold over the Atlantic Basin. Alrighty, folks, welcome to episode 23. We're digging right in on National Hurricane Center's homepage. Here is Hurricane Lee. As of 11 a.m., it was at winds of 105 miles per hour, and the central pressure was down to 983 millibars. I do anticipate once we get our 5 p.m. advisory here within the next hour, we're going to see major hurricane status achieved. Current track as of advisory 9 continues him off to the west-northwest with a fair bit of confidence as we roll through the evening of Saturday, and once we get beyond Saturday into Sunday and then to next week, it looks like confidence begins to dwindle and you can see the cone begins to expand greatly in diameter. This is precisely why we're going to dig into the variables that we are going to today for episode 23 because despite there being a fair bit of confidence over the next few days, it looks like confidence is starting to go back and forth as it gets closer to the Bahamas, whether or not it's going to turn north or kind of hug the coastline a little bit more and potentially be a threat for the northeast. Again, this is an earlier advisory. This is advisory 9. Once 10 rolls out, I can guarantee you all that this is going to have reached major hurricane status and I'll show you exactly why. Here is our true color satellite, courtesy of Tropical Tidbits. Love this website. I love this satellite shot. As I mentioned yesterday, Visible Satellite is one of the greatest tools that you can use for identifying tropical features and just looking at the overall dynamics and structuring of these storms. And this is a beautiful sight. We're about to lose the sun, but you can see some tremendous outflow along all quadrants of this storm. A very, very well-defined eye that took shape overnight and early this morning. Pretty quickly, as a matter of fact. We saw that eye kind of just come out of nowhere almost, if you will. So that goes to show that the terminology rapid intensification as everyone's been popping off on the social medias and on YouTube is indeed happening. It is in a very favorable environment as well. There's a bit of shear out to the northwest of it that it's getting ready to head right into. However, I do not believe that's going to diminish this storm little to no way possible because of the structuring we've seen and the deepening that's happening within its center of circulation. We'll come in just a little bit closer before sunlight completely dwindles and you can see that that core is so well defined and powerful. It is a very potent storm and at this point almost any kind of environmental stimuli from the outside is almost impenetrable. It's not going to make it through. This is an impermeable system at this point. The dryer that was impacting it a couple days ago, no longer the case. The shear out ahead of it is likely not going to do much to deter its intensification. And so this storm is going to bomb out, as I've been mentioning for the last two episodes now. We're anticipating a Cat 5 here by potentially Saturday, if not earlier than that. Okay, we're coming over to weathernerds.org because I'd like to show you more so the ensemble trends that we've seen over the last few days. So this is the latest run of our ensembles for the Euro model. And forget about Margo. Margo's out in the Atlantic getting ready to take shape and will be our next hurricane system out there in the Atlantic. And you can see the discontinuity in its ensemble members going wide left and wide right. But we're also beginning to see the same kind of indications with our Lee. As you can see, some of the ensemble models want to bring it to the north and east a lot quicker. Some still want to get a little closer to the Bahamas, which is a little more concerning as this thing continues to deepen over the next 24-48 hours. I do believe we'll see some weakening and the ensembles are doing a great job in identifying this as well once it gets to that upwelled water an indication of where franklin and Adalia once hold presence over the western atlantic but until then the sky's the limit in terms of what this system wants to do let's go ahead and rewind time though let's go back to zero z earlier this morning overnight last night we'll say and update the plot you can see that the northeast from manhattan further to the northeast is now under the gun with about 40 to 50 percent ensemble agreement that the storm could track that far to the north if i were to rewind time and show you what the ensembles looked like 24 hours before this zero z overlay you would be able to identify quickly that most of the consensus kept it well offshore potentially being a major player for bermuda's weather but now we're starting to see a much stronger westward track 
putting the northeastern coastline and eastern Canada under the gun for a potential catastrophic storm, albeit weakened from its current state. I'll get into the dynamics as to why I think the Euro and other model platforms are indicating this westward shift, but until then, I'm going to show you a little bit more inconsistency in our models. What we are looking at here is our multi-model ensemble viewer, and what that means in layman's terms is we have multiple model platforms, Euro, GFS, UK, Met, CMC off to the left-hand side, and we're looking at each of these individual model platforms ensemble members. And as you can see, it goes without saying, albeit the consensus, we can still draw a conclusion that this storm is going to get pulled to the north. You can still see that there is some discontinuity in what all of our models want to see it doing. If I were to draw a projected window of movement based on every single spaghetti plot on this chart, look at how wide of an area this encompasses. We have some of the ensembles tracking it back towards Haiti and eastern Cuba, back towards Jamaica. We have a few of them working their way into the Bahamas Marsh Harbor, unfortunately, which could be very catastrophic for those locations as well, maybe even the east coast of Florida. And then again, just as everyone's been alluding to, we have a good consensus that it is anticipated to get picked up by our features coming off of eastern Conus and draped further northward towards Bermuda and possibly the mid-Atlantic northeastern coastline. All in all, guys, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about hypothetical scenarios on this chart. I mainly just wanted to show you that despite the fair bit of confidence we've developed over the last few days, we've all kind of been mentioning this northward track, but the ensembles are still picking up on scenarios that could make this thing turn in a different direction. So regardless of the confidence we have in it going north, west, east, whatever the case may be, there is still some discrepancies that we need to keep an eye out for. We still have a few more days until it could start to turn north or possibly possibly continue to the west. I'm not trying to alarm anybody. I'm simply showing you that the ensembles are spitting out data that they wouldn't show. This wouldn't be popping up and going all over the place and looking funky like this if the models did not pick up one way or another that there is the potential for a westward shift. Now, I know that this is a wide range sea surface anomaly chart. However, I mainly just wanted to take a quick glance at that upwelling condition we saw with Franklin and Adalia zapping the ocean of its energy over the western Atlantic. So as it continues to transition west and eventually to the north, we should see this system begin to calm its jets a little bit and start to dissipate because the ocean is essentially tapped of any kind of heat exchange that it could take into its center of circulation and either maintain or even further deepen it as it transitions towards the mid-Atlantic coastline or unfortunately the island of Bermuda. So this could be our saving grace. I know again this map is very heavily zoomed out. I only wanted to spend a couple moments on it just to give you an idea that even though there's no real sheer or dry air in front of it, the waters are not conducive for further deepening. So if it's going to make Cat 4 or Cat 5 strength, he's got to do it quick. He's got a dwindling window of opportunity to execute that opportunity. All right, this is going to be our 12Z run of the European model, one of our more consistent model platforms. It's been very good run to run. However, it has started to make that westward shift as you get closer to the northeastern portions of the United States and eastern Canada. We're still holding out on a long wave trough anticipated to develop over the upper Great Lakes. You can start seeing it take shape as early as 15 Zulu on September. 11th, that fateful day. If you watch the blue shading begin to develop over the upper Great Lakes, central Canada, just to the south of James Bay, that is our likely forecasted trough axes that should pick up Hurricane Lee and steer it off to the north. Looking at this chart, however, there's going to be, once again, a very small window of time for this trough to pick it up and scoot it, because it looks like the Euro, and has been trending this way, the Euro is anticipating that our trough is going to get wrapped up and eaten alive by our mid, almost sharp amplitude ridge over the central and western portions of the Atlantic. If this takes shape, and I do believe I have a theory that I've mentioned with a couple of other my previous colleagues on other social media platforms to include one of my former weather commanders from the 25th Operational Weather Squadron. That trough is going to be the East Coast saving grace, and unfortunately, it doesn't seem like the models want to keep it around long enough to prevent a landfall at all along the upper northeastern coastline. So we're going to have to continue to monitor. This is, again, 216 hours out from a potential impact or at least an influence in the weather. So lots of time to get an idea of what analysis charts and synoptic data looks like, as well as if these trends continue or if it, God forbid, wobbles even further to the west or safely transitions back to the east. There's still such a huge margin of error. There is very little confidence. And that's something I want to hammer home to everybody watching right now. We have a fair bit of agreement and an idea and a theory as to where this storm can track. But in terms of confidence in it doing so, it's it's kind of half and half. We're sitting at a 50-50 ratio, I believe. That's just my opinion. Take that and do with it as you please. I'm not an official source. Rely on NHC and your degreed meteorologist. I only have my experience I'm leaning on, but just taking a look at the upper air pattern, it looks like our window of knocking this thing out to sea 
and posing no significant threat to folks in its path is starting to shorten. That margin is closing ever so slightly. Okay, so I briefly touched on a possible theory in terms of what Lee could be doing with the upper air pattern in close proximity to its vortex. As you go through time, this is once again 12Z Euro data. It's going to get cut off on the chart to the northern apex right in through here, but take a look at how this system with such tremendous amounts of outflow coming out of its center is starting to distort our jet pattern. And I do believe the anticyclonic flow as exhaust comes out of the vortex of the system, it's going to try to help amplify our mid-Atlantic ridge ever so slightly. And that's, I think, what's also going to help to push it a little closer to our coastline and potentially weaken the trough that is jet-supported over interior parts of Conus. I know that sounds like a stretch. I know it seems a little far-fetched, but remember, for the way these systems stack, they have the extreme lowest central pressure down at the surface, but just above it, which is why you get that anticyclonic outflow above the storm, you do have an area of high pressure and anticyclonic flow difluence. You can see it in the streamlines here. So it, these systems can distort the jet pattern. It can distort the jet stream and what it does with our long wave synoptic features. So we got to watch out for that. This is, again, way out in advance, is way out into the future. If this system does not deepen to its fullest extent, it may play no kind of impact in our upper air pattern. It could if it continues to deepen as rapidly as it is and kind of create its own little area of influence or sphere of influence, if you will. So we got to watch that. There's a lot of moving pieces here, as the title of this video alludes to. We're going to quickly look at half. A and B because I've noticed a bit of a concerning trend here. I'm going to rapidly go through the loop. You can see it deepening down to a Cat 5 system as early as Friday afternoon, maybe even Friday morning. Tomorrow morning, we could see a Cat 5 system out there in the Atlantic. It's still going to pass well to the north of our Leeward Islands, our Greater Antilles, providing them with a good amount of inflow along the backside of this storm, so they could see some increased thunderstorm action. The surf conditions are going to be off the charts, but as you go towards the back end of the loop, we fail to see that northward track, and you can see it continues off to the west closer and closer to our Bahama Islands and that's a little concerning because as the wind field on this storm continues to grow we'll go up to 850 millibars you can see the wind field is starting to really spread out with this cataclysmic storm so it's not going to take a real close proximity pass to the Bahama Islands to really start to feel some of those tropical storm force conditions lots of rip currents and high surf conditions as well as increased precipitation induced on the western flank of this storm I shift over to the Hafs B product and you can see the same thing in fact the Hafs B wants to take it even further to the south and bring it a hair closer to the Bahamas before trying, maybe at the very tail end of the loop, to trend to the north. You can see it kind of make that shift at the very end there, but even then, this is getting a little close for comfort. As you saw in the ensembles a couple panels ago, there are still some indications that the dynamics are in play, at least by a few of the ensemble members that this storm can move a little further to the west and impact some of the Bahama Islands, at least the eastern periphery of them. So we got to watch closely. This is next Tuesday at 18Z, so we still have some time to get ahead of it. If I have folks watching in the Caribbean, if I have folks watching in the eastern Bahama Islands, if you're capable of tuning in to any weather source, please keep your eyes out. This is a major hurricane, borderline Cat 5. This is a high-end Cat 4. So you're going to be feeling the effects well before 18Z on Tuesday. You'll know something's off in the weather pattern with the way you see things unfolding outside. So it goes without saying, we have to keep a close eye out. Confidence at this point in time really starts to decrease. We're very confident over the next 72, 96 hours, but at the beginning of next week, you saw the ensembles, you saw the operational models. Both of them show discontinuity and a little bit of inconsistency run to run. I want to remind you guys watching, it ain't fact until it happens. So please, please, I'm not fear mongering. I just want you to know this is the latest information. You can't argue with the data. And it goes to show that we're starting to get a little closer to our Bahamas than I ideally would like to see, especially with something of the likes of a Cat 4, maybe even a Cat 5 hurricane. Before we finish up the video, we got to turn our attention to the surface charts provided by Weather Prediction Center as we go towards Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. It looks like they're predicting that our first initial frontal wave is going to dissipate before it can play much of a role on Hurricane Lee's track. It'll be on Thursday. We get a bit of an occluded low forming up over the eastern Great Lakes, the northeastern portions of the United States, and this is going to be our trough that I mentioned to you guys on that 500 millibar European model chart that could pick this up and steer it away. However, if this system, if that mature wave weakens and undergoes frontalysis and cyclolysis basically dissipates faster than we're anticipating despite this 1020 millibar high upstream of it that could be problematic I still, in my humble opinion, think that anywhere from the Manhattan Island area further to the north up into eastern Canada really needs to pay close attention to this storm. I'm fairly 
fervent that we're not going to see anything further south than that except for some maybe increased wave heights and some rip currents along the coast because this is such an intense storm system. But from Manhattan to the north, we got to watch. We have to watch. It goes without saying. We have a catastrophic storm in the Atlantic. Everyone should be watching. No panic, no fear, but we got to be watching because it's not every day we have a Cat 4 or Cat 5 just kicking it in the Atlantic Ocean. Alrighty, everybody, as we get ready to wrap up episode 23, I also want to take a quick glimpse of what's on the horizon. At the very, very left-hand side of the screen here, we have our next tropical depression, which is likely going to be Tropical Storm Margo on our next 5 p.m. update as well. This is anticipated to become a hurricane. All the operational models and ensemble members do agree that this is going to be our next Atlantic hurricane. And you could see, if you remember a few episodes ago, I titled it The Freight Train is Coming. We have one... Two, three, four, five, six. We have a half dozen waves of energy and even one back behind that making their westward track across Central Africa. If these make it into the MDR and we don't see too much upwelling and zapping of energy with the systems that we do have out there right now, it's going to be off to the races once they get over open water and they start to tap into those hot sea surface temps. This is the peak of hurricane season, folks. I do anticipate we'll see Margot taste shape here very soon, and I want to project out that sometime Monday and Tuesday of next week, we're going to see Nigel checked off the list here very soon as this next wave comes off into the main development region. Otherwise, guys, we're going to wrap up episode 23. Let's get into the outro. And that brings us to the end of episode 23 of Weather Center Nazario. As you all can see, the future is very well unwritten for Hurricane Lee as he continues to propagate towards the west-northwest currently, with a hopefully anticipated turn to the north occurring within the next couple of days. By the weekend, ideally, we should have a greater idea of exactly where it's going to go and who's going to be impacted based on what the trends look like now and how they could take shape as we get closer to Saturday and Sunday. We will also have Hurricane Margot forming up in the Central Atlantic, and I believe Nigel's going to be closely on her tail as we work our way into early next week between Tuesday and maybe even as early as Monday. Albeit, guys, it goes without saying that the tropics are still fired up, the fireworks are still ongoing, and it looks like the show could go on for an extended period of time. But, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Please hit your notification bell. If you haven't done that already, so you make sure you do not miss an upcoming update because there's going to be a lot of them as we see everything popping off in the tropical Atlantic. But folks, until next time, this is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.